Guys, there's a ton of buzz going around online about a hot new crypto project called Canto that is shaking up the DeFi space. The Canto token itself has delivered a staggering 10x return trough to peak among a brutal bear market. And for this reason, it's gathered a ton of attention. But aside from this insane price appreciation, I want to tell you about a crazy opportunity for blockchain developers to earn passive income by building in the Canto ecosystem. This is a huge shift in how blockchains work and pay developers. So you need to check this out. I'm going to tell you everything in this video today as a blockchain chain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications because you're going to see more amazing content just like this on this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master and take advantage of everything that I'm talking about in this video today and increase your salary well past 100k, then I can show you how to do exactly that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Just click the link down below to get started today. All right, so let's jump right into this. Let's talk about this big opportunity for blockchain developers to make passive income with Canto. So quick disclaimer, nothing in this video is designed to be financial advice. I don't personally hold any Canto tokens at that time of recording this video. It's not a sponsored video, and I'm not saying put all your eggs in this basket because this is a new experimental technology. But I do see a ton of upside opportunity here, so let's see what it looks like. So let's over the basics. You know, what even is Canto in the first place? So Canto is a new layer one blockchain with some really novel design concepts behind it and some unique incentive and structures to pay developers. And so for those two reasons, that's that's why I think we're seeing so much attention around the cryptocurrency itself, because during the last cryptocurrency bull cycle, you know, alternative layer ones, I mean, really any smart contract blockchain besides Ethereum went absolutely crazy. OK, we saw things like Solana, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche and so many more just take off like crazy. And I think we're seeing a similar type of thing happen right now with Canto. So under the hood, Canto is a fork of EVMOS. So if you've been following my channel at all, I've covered that previously on there. So that should, you know, set some light bulbs off. And it also uses Tendermint consensus, which is secured by Canto validator nodes. So if you don't understand all of that, the important thing to understand is that, you know, the, blo the, the computers that make up the blockchain basically have validators and cryptocurrency can be staked to those nodes in order to validate transactions. You can earn passive income. So basically that can attract people to run the infrastructure. Staking is really hot in the crypto space. So what makes it so unique and how does this tie into earning passive income as a blockchain developer? Well, let's talk about the old way of how most blockchains work right now so that you can see how Canto does it differently. And that'll lead to the part where we talk about earning passive income. So let's talk about the old way. So most Smart contract blockchains like Ethereum basically work like this. They're split up into two layers, okay? So the blockchain layer itself, this is, you know, the computers that make up the entire network. You see all these nodes here on the bottom. You know, they're proof of stake nodes. They can earn passive income. But then basically you have these developers who are building smart contracts on top of those blockchains. That's the app layer. So here's the blockchain layer. Here's the app layer. And inside that app layer, you have smart contracts that power you know, everything that you need to make up a DeFi ecosystem, like a decentralized exchange, like Uniswap, for example, so you can trade tokens, that's that's fundamental. You need like a lending market, like uh, Aave, Compound Finance, so many others. And then you need some type of stable unit of account. Okay, I'm gonna call that a stable coin, basically a cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change or is pegged to a uh, fiat currency like e e the US dollar, for example. These are like DAI, USDC, uh, you know, Tether, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And once you have those basic things, you have a DeFi ecosystem. But let's talk about how developers have to make money in this space. Let's say you wanted to build a decentralized exchange, like a Uniswap competitor, for example. How would you make money? Well, whenever you create the smart contracts, you have to put them on the blockchain and you basically have to code into the smart contracts that you're going to take a fee anytime somebody swaps a token with your application. You have to actually program that into the smart contract itself. And then when you go to the application, you're going to see that fee tacked on to whatever you're doing. And so that's one way. But the other way typically is to launch some sort of cryptocurrency associated with your project and allocate some of those tokens for your team. And hopefully that cryptocurrency can appreciate in price long term and then you can capture some of that value. But most people, like their only choice is to launch a governance token, basically where you launch a cryptocurrency and then people who hold that cryptocurrency can just like vote on, you know, changes in the protocol but we've seen lots of problems with that model in the past. I'm not saying it can't work, but it does have its pitfalls. And one of those things is essentially not uh, seeing long-term price appreciation for those tokens. You know, we've seen lots of governance tokens get hit really hard among these bear markets. But Canto's working on a design that can fix both of these problems and potentially provide a lot of upside opportunity for blockchain developers. And so let's take a seat. But Canto's trying some new novel things to fix these problems that can lead to some opportunity for developers. And so let's see what that looks like. So first of all, let's look at the idea of Canto's free public infrastructure. OK, so I talk about those core primitives of like decentralized exchanges, lending markets and decentralized unit of account like stable coins, for example. So Canto takes a different approach by choosing to launch these core 
or DeFi primitives as public utility protocols or free public infrastructure, where basically it removes the need to have these governance tokens for these applications. And instead, basically just the Canto token itself is the thing that governs the blockchain and also these free public infrastructures. And so instead of having all these extraneous tokens that could go to zero, there's a much higher chance that that value could accrue back to the native cryptocurrency of the ecosystem itself because it's doing multiple things. And so like, for example, when you put the decentralized exchange out on Canto as free public infrastructure, like it's not gonna be changed, it's not gonna be governed by a token and you won't see additional fees over time, basically preventing the possibility of predatory evolution towards rent seeking behaviors and the lending market itself is gonna be controlled by the Canto stakers. They have broad interest in the growth of the ecosystem and you won't see uh, rent seeking at the application layer either. But now let's talk about one of the bigger things here for blockchain developers, which is contract secured revenue. So basically that means if you put a contract out there on Canto that other people are paying to use, then you're automatically going to get a cut of the fees, the transaction fees that people pay to use that particular application. So how is this such a big paradigm shift? Why is it such a big deal? Well, before I was saying, like, if you created a, a DEX like Uniswap, for example, you'd have to tack on some sort of fee, maybe launch a governance token, but we've got governance tokens out of the equation. And then also you as a developer don't have to code in uh, fees into your application. The blockchain is going to do it for you and it's going to share the revenue with you as the application creator and also the node operators of the blockchain itself. So let me just clarify that even more. Basically, let's say that you built a dApp on top of Ethereum right now. Somebody goes to use it. Let's say Uniswap, for example, they click swap in their wallet. They see a fee come up, all right? They're gonna pay two fees, the gas fee to the blockchain, all right? And then they're also gonna pay, you know, part of the swap that they did is gonna get essentially tacked on or debited from the amount of cryptocurrency they receive back when they swap. That's how it works now. But in this way, there's gonna be no fees tacked on with the swap. And then when they pay that gas fee, part of it's gonna go to the people running the blockchain and part of it's gonna go to the person who created the smart contract, in this case, you know, the developer or potentially you. And so that is a massive paradigm shift. And I think there's a big opportunity on the table right now for blockchain developers for several reasons. Number one, if you put a contract out there on the blockchain and anybody uses it ever, you're gonna guarantee to make some money, okay? I'm not saying you're gonna like just sit back and you know rake it in, but it's just one transaction, like you'll get paid. But on top of that, you know, Canto is a brand new virgin ecosystem that's ready to be colonized, okay? And we've seen this happen in the past. And one of the fastest ways to colonize a new ecosystem is essentially fork other projects, you know, change some things about them and then launch them onto these ecosystems. We've seen this time and time again with new ecosystems. I saw this with Solana, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, particular things that were EVM compatible took off really fast. And so there's always gonna be room for competition in these new ecosystems and the fewer competitors there are, especially in the early times, means it's more likely that people are gonna make transactions with your application and therefore you can get paid to do that. And so how can you get started building on Canto today if you wanna take advantage of this opportunity? So the good news is you can do Canto development with pretty much the exact same skills that I teach you on this channel and inside of DAP University because Canto is EVM compatible, which means that you can use the Solidity programming language and any front end that you've created for any other Solidity application can easily be ported over to Canto. But if you want a step-by-step -step guide, then definitely check out the docs.canto.io and look at the quick start guide to take, take a look. I'd recommend first just familiarizing yourself with the platform. You can go to canto.io, connect your wallet. You're gonna wanna bridge over the ecosystem. Just start using the applications to see what it's like. As always, be careful with bridges. Don't bridge any funds that you can't afford to lose in this situation. But it's a good idea to just get the user experience before you start building for it. But then you can definitely check out the Quick Start Guide. You're gonna wanna use the Canto RPC URL to connect to it and also a test net so you can put contracts on the network without you know, having to spend any real cryptocurrency just to test things out. I always recommend that before you go to mainnet. You could use um, you know, some of these basic smart contracts that they include in the documentation just to get a hello world contract out there you can see different libraries that they use. You know, you can use standard stuff like Ethers.js, okay? And that would be a good smoke test to see if you can just get a contract out there. But then once you've done that, I would definitely take a project like any of the ones on my YouTube homepage and then try to deploy that to the Canto ecosystem on a test network first, just to see if you can get things working, of course, before moving to that final step, which would be the main net. Now, that's a great way to get started with Canto if you're talking about more just toy applications or pet projects. But if you really want to go for the throat and build a professional level project that people would actually use in this ecosystem, or you could get the attention of, you know, a potential employer who's like, hey, this person is really, you know, cutting edge. They're building on Canto before anybody else is. Then you're going to need the foundational professional level skills to do that. And that's what I've helped thousands of people learn through DAP University. And that's what I can help you do too. you know, break in the industry 
increase your salary well past 100K over at dappyversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Again, you can just click the link down below to get started today. So that's an overview of the Canto ecosystem, why it's such a big deal, how you can earn passive income as a developer. I hope you like this video. Smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.